Hi, I'm David Stein of Money for the Rest of Us, and today I answer the question, what is modern portfolio theory, and what is wrong with it? Suppose you're exploring a large city that you've never previously visited, or you're hiking a wilderness area for the first time. Would it better we have an inaccurate map or no map at all? That's the question raised by Nassim Nicholas Taleb in his book, Silent Risk. Taleb contends that when it comes to financial modeling, including determining an optimal asset allocation for institutions and individuals, that many investment practitioners and academics prefer an inaccurate map to no map at all. The inaccurate map that is used by many financial advisors in working with clients to determine the optimal asset mix is called modern portfolio theory, or MPT. I also use this flawed map with, for many years with my clients as an institutional advisor. Harry Markowitz introduced modern portfolio theory in 1952 and eventually won the Nobel Prize for his efforts. The theory was developed from the early 50s throughout the early 70s and it remains the bedrock of modern finance. The idea behind modern portfolio theory is that for a given level of risk, there is an optimal portfolio mix, which is the split between stocks, bonds, and other asset classes that will maximize the expected return. With MPT, risk is defined as volatility, which is the variability of returns. How high are the highs compared to how low are the lows? To use an asset allocation model based on modern portfolio theory, you need a couple of things. You need an expected return and an expected volatility for each asset class, such as domestic large company stocks, small company stocks, international equity, bonds, and many others. Then you need an assumption for how these asset classes move in relation to each other. How closely do the asset classes' returns track in the same direction, or perhaps move in opposite direction over a given period of time? This is called correlation. With these inputs for a given level of expected return, the model can calculate the op optimal mix between stocks, bonds, real estate, and other asset classes that minimizes the expected volatility. Then there's a line graph of the expected returns and volatilities of different optimal portfolios. And that line graph is called the efficient frontier. And the, the goal of the exercise is to select a portfolio mix that lies on that efficient frontier. Sound complicated? Well, it is, because there's a lot of inputs. When I worked with clients, institutional clients, such as college endowments and private foundations to help them select a portfolio mix, we used modern portfolio theory. And what I found is most clients didn't really want a truly optimal portfolio. They wanted a portfolio that fit their comfort level. And so by optimal, we developed a portfolio that was just palatable to the client. In other words, it resided on the efficient frontier but that efficient frontier was heavily constrained and customized to the client's comfort level. It was very much an exercise in creating an optimal diet for clients consisting of food groups they were willing to eat. We might exclude spinach or Brussels sprouts or other vegetables that don't taste very good. And so it wasn't necessarily the healthiest diet, but it was the one that they were comfortable with. We would do the same thing when it came to acid allocations. And I, clang, I clung to this flawed map because it seemed better than having no map at all and it got clients to diversify into different asset types. But I finally gave up modern portfolio theory when I could no longer ignore the evidence that MPT had serious flaws. These flaws were outlined by Nassim Nicholas Taleb in his book, The Black Swan, and by Benoit Mandelbrot in his book, The Misbehaviors of Markets, and I'll link to both of those below the video. The problem with MPT, it assumes market returns congregate around the average expected return much more than they actually do. In other words, Good times and bad times. Good returns, bad returns happens way more frequently than the theory predicts. MPT also assumes returns in one year do not affect returns in the next, that the returns are independent from year to year, and that's actually not the case. And finally, it assumes investors are rational agents, that they are all alike. And we know that investors are very, very different. So the truth is, exceptionally good and bad returns happen much more often than the theory predicts. And these extreme events tend to clump together rather than be spread out randomly. They cluster. And as you know as well as me, investors are far from rational but suffer from bouts of extreme fear and greed. So you don't need to use modern portfolio theory. And I don't use it when, in terms of my allocation or in teaching members of money for the rest of us. We focus on building diversified portfolio by having different portfolio drivers and making sure that we have reasonable return assumptions 
for those asset classes. And then in terms of risk, we don't care about volatility. We care about losing money. How much can we lose in a market drawdown? And what's a reasonable expectation for recovery? And so you don't have to use modern portfolio theory, but you should be diversified by having different portfolio drivers and understand what you can earn investing. Hey, if you liked the video, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and you'll be notified next time a video is uploaded. Thanks.